First up, we have John Thornett, the Director of Peak Strategies, who has over 20 years experience in pharmacy accounting. Now, John started Peak Strategies with a vision to build an accounting firm that the pharmacy industry could trust and could come to for specialist industry business advice. Peak Strategies since then has grown to have a really strong client base of not just pharmacy owners, but also pharmacists themselves right throughout Australia. Uh, and the aim for all their clients is to help take their business to new heights, which sounds like a, a great goal, a great aim for me. So without further ado, here's John to talk about refocusing on pharmacy business. And I'll just hand over to you, John. Thank you. Pleasure to be with you all. Hope you're all doing well in this, uh, this well, your evening, my, uh, my late afternoon here in WA. Um, I hope you're all doing well. Now, this session uh, all about refocusing on your pharmacy in a post-COVID world. Uh, dare we be so bold enough to think about our life in a post-COVID world? Um, and look, you'd be happy to know that uh, uh, Fortress WA has uh, finally had a crack and there is this thing called COVID, you may have heard about it, um, that's uh, coming into our world, but all well and good. So um, uh, trying to uh, get access here, but... Um, to flick the slides, but it doesn't seem to want to. Is it not giving you access, John? No. Um, actually, just let's try something here. Um, it says at my end that it's waiting for you to control your screen. So let me just go back. Um, uh, just uh, it doesn't seem to want to move or do any. Ah, there we go. There we go. We're hunky dory. Okay, there we go. Okay, so a uh, couple of things that we're going to go through over the course of this uh, my little session here, if I can flick through, because it's not going to work for me now, is fine. Um, John, if you if if it's a bit uh, glitchy, at your end, just sing out. I'll just change the slides for you. Yeah, maybe just bring up the, the whole slides as you go through, because I'm clicking, but it's not really working there we go um oops now it's gone too far there we go that's all right i'll keep an eye on it for you okay good stuff thanks man so this is what we're going to go through so we're going to go through some of the advantages that uh COVID has provided in uh, in the community pharmacy world, and particularly how you can take advantage of those. There's a few little areas that um, I want you to get uh, refocused on that uh, are, are quite important, and some of them are particularly important and very relevant now um, that uh, you need to be refocused on. And then we're going to finish off with uh, how you can uh, how you can get yourselves back on track and learn to, to start to breathe again. So let's go into uh, the main opportunities here. So we'll just uh, flick through, uh, we'll just flick through these points here, we'll get through to them, there we go. Um, right, so, so above all, th there is no doubt that uh, in a, uh, in community farms, you see in the last two years, have been particularly challenging. Yeah, you know, there's been staff shortages, there's been unprecedented demand on pharmacy product services. Um, there's been a lot of work pressure, a lot of work stress. Just simply the, the basics to try and find stock in itself has been, uh, been particularly challenging. So it's brought uh, a lot of stress to the community, but there's been some, some uh, there's been some, uh, a lot of positives, a lot of advantages to come from it as well. Now, observations, and all these are observations from my own client base, from all the valuations and everything else that I do. Um, every state's had different experiences, different pharmacies in different locations will have different experiences, but by and large, uh, pharmacies have experienced an exceptional period of strong trading performance. If you look over 21 financial year and leading into 22 financial year, year to date, most pharmacies are seen are getting uh, some really good uplift in, in turnover and profitability. And just think, it wasn't that long ago, in um, two years ago, it wasn't uncommon to see the retail um, sales element of pharmacy to see be declining by five, ten percent a year. That, that wasn't unusual. And now we're in this period where we're seeing, you know, good uplift in in uh, in, in dispensaries, seeing good uplift in turnover, and it's been sustained. Uh, I've talked to, to some clients last week. 
some saying that their January just passed was their best month ever, which is a, 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 a a heck, a heck of a statement for considering January is normally uh, quite a, a low month. So there's been some uh, consistently strong trading performance. Now, the next three elements I feel are, 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 are particularly relevant. We'll, we'll, I'll mention all of these in one. Now, pharmacy, as everyone has, uh, as everyone has stated and comment on, pharmacy has been on the front line, okay? But... As the public has, as uh, as the community has become aware, is actually pharmacy is actually really relevant to our uh, to our local health needs because they're always open, they are always accessible. I can always go get the medications. Okay, I can always drive up there and and um, talk to someone for free. It's pretty good. I've always been able to get my medications, vaccinations, which have been critical. Always be able to get vaccinations, the rats, everything like this. So community pharmacy's reputation has, has really improved, in my view, really improved, and particularly the relevancy of pharmacy within a community health spectrum. Because certainly over the last two years, the, 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 the community, and particularly they're engaging a lot more with their pharmacies, become aware of just how important this industry is and this community is. So we're going to look at these opportunities that are right here. How do we take advantage of them? What's, the, what's, the, what's our next step? Okay. So I'll get you to, yeah. So this is, um, this is your starting point. Okay. And this is my strong recommendation as to where you start. Now, you guys would remember this from, uh, from, from 2020, the Community Pharmacy 2025 Framework for Change. So there was this document. There's also the market research document as well. And uh, it is a great idea. My strongest suggestion to you is actually stop and go back and familiarise yourself with not only the research, but also um, some of the key points they raise here. Because these are still very relevant to pharmacy now. And it's particularly relevant to see uh, where your particular pharmacy is and also where it needs to evolve into. Now, a lot of the opportunities I'm gonna talk about, I'm gonna be referencing back to particular points made in this document here, okay? Just so when you go back, you can go to these those particular points and look at them, and you can see what I'm what I'm talking about. But the the important thing to note here is that these times you've been through, these times you're about to go through, yeah, th these times won't last. Okay, things will change, and there'll be this new norm, whatever it may be. Okay, so things think things will will. Things will change and whatever uplift you're going through now may not last forever. So let's get into it. Let, let's get into some uh, let's get into some more points here. So if I can have the, the next slide, please. There we go. Okay. So what so what we're going to go through here, and you'll see with each opportunity here, you see that top one where I've got there, the key focus area, which is leveraging brand. And what I'm referring back to is uh, one of the key points raised in the CP2025 document. Now, community engagement and reputation. Now, there's probably ne never been a greater opportunity for pharmacy to really get focused on um, broadening their engagement with the community because the community has been very engaged with pharmacy, been able to access the medications. When all the rest of the world is shut down, pharmacies open. Or can always talk to people, can always get medications. They've been there for vaccinations. They're going there for the rats now. But there's never been a, a probably a, a better opportunity to go and and um, and get focused on um, get focused on your brand and to grow your brand and to grow on a on a grander scale. Okay, and particularly when we look at uh, health and accessibility. Okay, it's two important points. And the community is very focused, not only focused on health, probably more focused on health than what they have been, but also very focused on uh, accessibility as well. So again, we've got this, this great opportunity to grow our brand and to reach out more into the community. And then what I'm talking about here in particular is your marketing strategy, okay? Now, pharmacy is generally, look, fairly crap. 
if we're going to be honest, at, at, at marketing, okay? But there is a great opportunity here to really grow your marketing reach. And so within the realms of things that you probably really need to be focused on is what's our marketing strategy to go and reach out to as many people in the community as possible because you've got a great opportunity to build them, um, to, to capture them and to build loyalty and to keep them coming back. Okay, now there's a particular point I want to, a couple of points I want to make here. Now we're talking about you being exposed to uh, extra patients and extra customers, people coming to you for, for vaccinations, a lot of people you probably haven't seen before, okay? So it's a great opportunity for you to capture these. And when within Peak, we have this, um, uh, what we call our Pharmacy Mastermind Program, which is a, a program we've got here to grow profitability in, in, in pharmacies. Now, in that, we talk about um, growing turnover. And there's, there's four key points to growing turnover. That's growing your customer numbers, growing your customer loyalty, growing the frequency, which is the number of times they come to your store, and also growing how much they to spend, either in price or in quantity of product. And I think what you've got here, and the three elements you really need to focus on is a solid marketing strategy that enables you to communicate and engage more with your community. And that is really important because there's never been a great opportunity to do that and that is right now, okay? And then through that, with more people coming to your store is how do you capture the loyalty, okay? Loyalty programs are absolutely vital right now because loyalty programs are all about data. That are all about a customer base. Where you've got customer names and email addresses, you have an ability to communicate. If you have an ability to communicate, you have an ability to capture someone's loyalty, but you also have an ability to capture the frequency, to get them to come back for their scripts, for their repeats, for their health services. Okay, so this is a great opportunity now. So let's flick over to... Let's flick over to the next slide. Now, the next one I want to talk to you about here, and I'm still going to push on this element of, of community engagement. And the particular focus here I'm working on here is the community health hub and health service areas. Okay. Now, staff shortages, extreme workloads, yeah, owners have taken their focus off this area. Okay. Because it's just been about survivability and just getting through the workloads. So, you know, the we have dropped off, okay, which is fine, that's okay. But there is a great opportunity here. And when we talk about community engagement, we're not only reaching out to the community as in the individuals and our potential customers and patients, but there's also a great opportunity now for you to reach out and look for collaborations, okay? When you're looking at um, uh, working with schools, childcare centers, doctors, medical specialists, sporting clubs, there's a whole range of uh, you know, community organisations, not-for-profit organisations. And there's opportunities here for owners to go out there to reach out to these organisations and go, how can I help you? How can we work together for the benefit out of our community? Okay. Some of the best pharmacy owners I know do this extremely well. Okay. But I must note here that if an owner is rostered on, as in rostered on behind the dispensing counter, they're not going to have the time to do this. Okay, it's the owners who aren't rostered on, but still very actively engaged in their stores, very actively engaged. They're the ones who are going out and talking to people. And I know some pharmacy owners who do uh, exceedingly well from this area who've got some great collaborations going with, you know, local government, uh, you know, with other doctors, health specialists, even with occupational therapists, with other sporting clubs. And the revenue they bring in is actually quite significant, okay? But if you're stuck behind the dispensing counter, you can't do this. Incidentally, uh, halfway through last year, I was speak August last year, I was speaking at the WA um, uh, Pharmacy Forum. And the topic I was talking about was uh, the, my top six favourite performing pharmacies. So these are pharmacies that perform, you know, they just get growth in their profitability year after year after year. These are guys in um, 
you know, old established suburbs, got a lot of competition, some of them from, you know, um, you know, big discounters, a lot of competition, yet these guys are getting profit year after year after year. Incidentally, in that top six, three were owner were owner operated, meaning the owner was rostered on actually working in. Three of them were manager operated, meaning the owner was not rostered on there. So the there's the old theory of um, you know, a pharmacy will never perform as well as, as, a, as, a, as an owner operator one. It's not necessarily true, but you've got to get out there. There are opportunities out there in collaborations, okay? Health services. Talking to some owners, they'll put their hand up and say, look, we just dropped the ball on this, okay? We've just been you know, just trying to keep up and vaccinating people all day and dealing with scripts and arguments and, and people complaining and all sorts of weird things going on in this crazy world we live in. Okay, I know several, several clients have put their hand up and said, we just lost focus, okay? Use the opportunity analysis tool that's available from McGill. It's a great tool. Go grab that and have a look at where you're going compared to what your potential is. And it's a great opportunity now to you to work with your, um, with your, with your pharmacists, your dispensing teams, et cetera. Go, right, let's capture this. Let's get focused back on this again because we're losing opportunities, okay? So if we move on to the, to the next slide, Again, we're going to work on this in, uh, community engagement collaboration, but we're going to work on the in-home care, okay? And particularly, this is now an opportunity when, particularly as we've seen the last two years, of people not necessarily keen on going out. Um, they want to be able to access what they want, but don't necessarily want to get in the car and go there. And it's a great opportunity now for pharmacy owners to think, how, what's another way that we can deal and, and interact with our customers. Very good example, pre-COVID, post-COVID, okay? If I look at a um, number of pharmacies that I know that were not doing deliveries versus those who were doing deliveries as soon as COVID come in, just about everyone's doing deliveries now. Before, you hardly saw it, okay? And that was a big change of those who got their cars and were doing deliveries. And that really ramped up during the course of COVID. Why? Because they need to be able to access their customers and be able to look after them and service them from their home. Okay, so there is an opportunity to think differently about this. Okay, because pharmacy has always been this, um, this brick, you know, four walls, here's my bricks and mortar store, open up the front door, hang out your shingle, please come to me, please come to me. Okay, you need to be going to them. You need to be going to your customer. So have a look at different ways of doing this. And I feel this is, this is very important and this is where pharmacy probably needs to get better at, okay? Some of your, your big brands probably have the apps that are available, okay? If you're an independent, you should be capturing those as well. Online retail is huge opportunity waiting. Again, that's not done very well but I've got clients who are moving in this space and are really reaching into this and they're going to do exceedingly well from this. You know, booking appointments online, online retail, okay, uploading scripts, whatever, okay. There's a great opportunity here because that's how your customers are interacting with everyone else. Why can't they do that here? EDMs, electronic direct mail, okay. We've got a loyalty program, you've got um, emails. You got emails. You got an ability to speak to someone. Okay. You got the ability to speak to someone. You can capture their attention. Electronic direct emails. Every two months, this is what we work towards with our clients. Every two months, email should be going out to your database on educating them and about your products and services, but mainly educating them. And don't forget social media as well. There's a great opportunity there. In home care. Okay, get focused on it because there is an opportunity there for you to um, really work better with your, with your customers. So let's move on. Now, this is a very, very big area and very relevant right now, okay? You've got to get focused on your team, okay? I've talked to many pharmacists and they say the same thing. They are very tired, they are burnt out, they've been sustaining this pressure for, for, for two odd years now, okay? There are staff shortages. There are some critical staff shortages going on. You, you cannot find a pharmacist at the moment, 
okay? Talk amongst my clients are all the same. They cannot find a pharmacist, okay? And don't forget, they've been on the front line, so their exposure risk has also been very heightened, okay? And so there's, a, there's some tension around here, and dare I raise it, the pay issues. You've probably seen um, the, uh, the AJP article uh, last week, I think it was, and it talked about pharmacists demanding $80 an hour. I can verify with you. Um, uh, we had uh, my managers talk to some clients last week who are trying to get some pharmacists. Good luck. Um, and I can verify $80, $85 now is what they were demanding. Okay. And that is laws of supply and demand. Okay. Very high demand, very low supply. What happens? Pay rates go up. Are they worth it? Probably. Does the model can't afford it, unfortunately. But these are very real pressures. And now is a very, very critical time. Get focused on your team. Your team culture is absolutely everything, okay? You need to really show some strong leadership here. Get very involved in your teams and make sure you build that culture and, be, and really be in that culture and identify what's going on, okay? Engage with your team. Have some fun activities, okay? I know one client today told us, they organise um, a team to come over to give all their staff massages in, 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 in the shop, okay? And others have been out there. They've taken their um, team out on the town and had meals and drinks and have all sorts of fun. Go have some fun, okay? They're worth it. I know others have paid them bonuses. Some paid $500,000 bonus to their pharmacists to say, look, guys, thanks very much. You know, hell of an effort. Don't forget about the pay reviews performance reviews, re-engage with them and really build communication, okay? This is vital. You're better off to, to, to up your pharmacist from 40 to $45 an hour than to lose them, can't find one or having to pay $80 an hour. And your team are worth it because they've been through a lot. Also, very good opportunity to go through your organisational chart, um, go through your job descriptions, re-look at that. Okay, there are some advantages to be made. Okay, particularly if you, as owners, if you can reduce the number of hours and get out there, work on your marketing, work on your community engagement, get out there with your collaborations. Okay, there are opportunities to be made there. Okay, so let, let's move on. We're just giving you a uh, about a 10 minute warning. Yep, no, we're all good. We're coming to the end, so all good. Um, so let's move on this next one. This, this is quite often forgotten about, okay? When times are good and we're making some money, this area is forgotten about. It's normally we, uh, we, we uh, tighten on this one when um, we generally tighten on this one when uh, things are going down or we need to start saving some money. But I did want to stress here the opportunity to look at automation. And the focus area here, if you go back to your CP2025, operations, automation, and go look at that. And of course, we're not just talking about your dispensing workflow automation or, or your packaging systems, et cetera. There are some really good opportunities there. So if we're looking at labor, and we're looking at trying to make our staff more efficient, okay, we've got to look at ways of automating the repetitive and making sure that your, your staff are being very effective. And it's not just in that area as well. There's plenty of other tools around that can be implemented to reduce labour time, okay? Look at there's rostering systems, payroll systems, even in your bookkeeping accounting functions, there's plenty of tools available now that can make all those steps a lot more efficient than what they have been. Very important you look at that and have a good review of your internal systems, okay? Because our eyes have been taken off this lately because we've just been about surviving. Your eyes have been taken off this, but now's a good time to get focused. And so what I want to, I want to move on to the next slide here. So what I want to do is take you through what do you do now? Okay, what do you do now? Very first point here. Okay, go to your community, 20, community pharmacy 2025 framework for change and also the, the market research document. Okay, spend some time, go have a look at that and remind yourself, as I said before, remind yourself about where you are and where your pharmacy needs to evolve to. Because most owners I talk to sort of taken their eye off the ball and because they're just trying to survive and just trying to get through it. Okay. 
but do remind yourself, get your pencil out as well and make some notes. And then between you and your, um, your between you, your um, your other partners and, you, and you, your managers as well, your retail manager, dispensary managers, get together, do your SWOT analysis, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, threats, and do an analysis of your pharmacy as it exists right now. And you'll find that you'll be able to identify some areas that, right, this is where we really need to concentrate. And if your marketing, community engagement strategies are not on that list, I suggest you go back and have a look again. Because if you're going to capture the activity that you, that's been happening, if you're going to capture all these people that have come to you for vaccinations, if you've got to capture um, the growth that some people have, granted if you're in the CBD, um, you know, it's been pretty tough, okay? But this is a, a critical area that you need to get focused on. Get focused on your teams, re-engage with your teams and really get engaged with your community and marketing strategies have got to be a number one focus here because they are vital and most pharmacies are not doing it well. Okay, and from that, get your action plans, what's going to be done over the next 12 months. So that's it for me. Um, given the, the timelines, uh, Daniel, I hope I uh, uh, got, got, got within the, the timelines there. If anyone's got any questions, by all means, let me know. If you want to get in contact, ask some questions, there's my email, there's our website. I've got a lot of content on, the, content on there. We've got uh, blogs, we've got uh, webinars, um, there's uh, LinkedIn there for peak strategies. Also jump on the, um, my own uh, LinkedIn uh, page as well, Facebook, Instagram, and, uh, and go check us out. But sign up to our, our, our website, there's a lot of good content on there. Well, great work, John. Firstly, I love a finance person that talks marketing because I don't think it happens enough and I think the two should work very, very closely together. Now, you talked about uh, community engagement and that can actually mean uh, different things to different people depending on the, the context. As a marketer myself, we're taught to start with those customers in the middle and to always build our response of either products or services out from there how useful do you think it is for pharmacists and pharmacy owners to to go and speak to customers directly either informally or maybe they want to create sort of like little focus groups with the specific view of getting feedback about how they're going and, and what can be changed because a lot of businesses probably not just pharmacies but a lot of businesses in many industries are guilty of just sitting in a room themselves and deciding by themselves what customers should need and, and what should change rather than engaging with the customers themselves. How useful do you think that is for pharmacists? Oh, look, it, it's um, certainly in our experience and our experience with our own clients, um, there is a lot of opportunity to be made there. I mean, for, for, for example, um, there was, um, I can remember distinctly one particular client and, and actually a number of examples where um, we had one particular client was doing a number of events in store and the owners were front and centre, okay? And it just went so well. And um, the owners are out there with, their, um, with the local sporting groups, okay? And they were housing housing events for their sleep apnea machines and how to how to clean their sleep apnea machines and the amount of referrals and work they got from that was incredible and so if you're not there you're not aware of the conversations that go on or what's particularly relevant in your community and and you know the goodwill is alive and well and a lot of goodwill sticks with the team and sticks with the owner and so owners need to be there they don't necessarily need to be rostered on, but they need to be front, front and centre in that store and being aware of what's going on. So I totally agree with you. And yeah. I've seen clients who have done exceedingly well from exactly that strategy. Yeah, it, it's great advice. And I think listening to you talk, if I was to uh, paraphrase or, or, or surmise everything that you said, it is that old saying that we hear so often when we're talking to business owners about how to improve, and that is, the difference between working on your business and working in your business. It's, it's front and centre and you definitely have to get the balance. So great chat, John. Excellent. Thank you so much. We'll, we'll let you Pleasure. go. Um, Pleasure. I, I can't take everybody off mute, but I'm sure that they are all clapping and very appreciative of your time. So, so great chat. Thank you very much. Now,